Welcome, fellow travelers. I am Dez of the Revis Order, and I'm joining Chibi and Vertec at the Golden Feather. Come on in, grab a seat, and let's share tales of adventure. Hello, 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 everybody. And welcome to the Golden Feather Tavern, where your hosts, Chibi and Vertec, discuss <laughs> ashes of creation and important topics spoken about within the ashes community. Every week, we invite you, the viewer, and a special guest to pull up a chair, grab a pint, and join the conversation with us. Today is the 5th of January, 2024. Can you believe it? We're on episode 192, A New Beginning, 2024. And the traveling bar joining us today is this Revis. How are you today, friend? I'm doing great. It's a good day. Fantastic. Fantastic. Great and good days are always good and wonderful. <laughs> and Chibi, oh. how are you? You're a little robot -y. We're losing you. I'm good. Um, besides you being a robot. Although the way you said um, a new beginning, my brain did like ADHD stuff and it was like a new Baylore Delana <laughs> from World of Warcraft. <laughs> and I was nice. like, nice. no brain. No. <laughs> no brain. Bad brain. Don't do it. Bad brain. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh um oh so chibi what do we have on tap today what do we have on tap today um yeah. well today we will be talking about um the class abilities mayorship and taxes in miscellaneous community topics such as um some kind of theory crafting on where different races live within Vera. Um, the Alpha 2 trailer that came out and, um, you know, a few other things that I'll let you guys figure out later. But um, if any of that sounds awesome or interesting to you, please, uh, if you could take a moment to like or subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can see when we go live next time. Um, with that, though, um, Desrevis, for those who don't know about you, who are you? Uh, I'm Des Revis. Uh, I am the leader of the Revis Order. Uh, mm. We just turned 12 years old in in December. So nice. that's happy, a happy birthday! Time. Yes, yeah. happy birthday! We actually Would announced you? that too. We we're like, oh my gosh, guys! <laughs> yeah, uh, we're uh, we're a PVX guild with a lot of uh, roleplay theming, um, and uh, really into the roleplay scene as well. Nice. Um, community based, love it. Yeah, absolutely. And I think um, as Alpha 2 comes along, we will have a lot of interesting options for roleplay. Do you have anything in mind or do you think of any, there's anything that Ashes to Ashes, oh wow, Alpha 2 for Ashes will, um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. will help you <laughs> in your... <laughs> <clears throat> Well, uh, that's the, one of the big things is uh, we are the only, to my knowledge, uh, all elven guild. So that'll definitely be one of those things. Ooh. Ooh. I might have to pop in and roleplay with you guys, too. You're always welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, I don't know what Vertec did. He made a weird noise and I, I got a little distracted. Sorry. I was I was kind of half chuckling at uh, Wizzy playing around with the uh, Lacano, um Oh yeah. Power up. We I thought we I were trying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we um we were struggling um trying to figure out something that'd be neat and interesting for those two because they they popped on and they couldn't believe that neither one of us have played any of the Baldur's Gate stuff and they both got us copies mm -hmm. of Baldur's Gate three. Was at the same time. Awesome. Yeah, at the same time. Like, literally, th th they were both typing it in at the same time, and it just went up, blam, blam, and they both like, hey, whatever. So, uh, we had to get them emotes, and so I just remembered uh, Dragon Ball Z and uh, Trunks. And, uh, <laughs> what the heck Go did tank. they end up calling right, it? Go Tank. Yeah, Go yeah, Tank was, uh, was the combination with <laughs> Go Tanks. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, the combination with the little power up uh, animation they did, and I said, "You know what? That'd be Fusion great." Fusion dance. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. 
But yes, uh, we'll probably see a lot more of the emotes being played out tonight, uh, as this is our first stream back into 2024. A lot of things have been updated, including, but not limited to, emotes that are available over here on Twitch. So, um, eventually, should we get uh, monetized over on YouTube, we will also include some of these emotes over there, but alas, we are not, so sorry guys, you are um, limited to whatever YouTube gives you. <laughs> But um, what, if anything, are you most looking forward uh, to in Alpha 2? Is, is there anything that in particular from what we've seen so far or what we're expecting to see that calls to you? Um, I want to see more of the more of the node like fleshed out and <clears throat> seeing how the how the different uh, uh, different systems happen with the nodes and whoever uh, gets mayorship, how they're able to uh, fix up a a sweet science node, or uh, no, it, sorry, academic node now. Yeah, <laughs> academic. I, I gotta, I gotta break that. It's just, it's science forever. Well, uh, to wasn't. be fair, I think on the um, wiki it does say that it's like a synonymous naming. So. Yeah, I think um, I mean, wasn't he? Seen like a, yeah, go ahead. Wasn't he? And I could be remembering this wrong, but I thought I thought he'd mentioned something along the lines of it was a. Uh, he was calling it academic because it has an academy on it, but it was actually the scientific node. He was just naming it that. But I forget. I could be. We have to look that up now. I think. I think you're kind of right because it's supposed to have like the scholars guild or something. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As you were. As you Mad Hatter says, "I really want to see a node go from one stage to the next." And Wizzy says at Desrevas, yes, nodes are such a huge focus of the game, yet we know so little. And I mean, I also feel like the part of the reason why we know so little is because it's so much. <laughs> it's, there's a lot to it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. Like I want, I want to see bigger than a village, but I, you know, and baby steps, yeah. I guess. Yeah. Someday. Yeah. Someday. Exactly. Oh. Oh. We lost a Vertec. Dude. Oh, he's back. What? Huh? Who? When? <laughs> um. Oh. So, let's see. We missed being able to do a live reaction to the last uh, live stream. Because, of course, in um, PGF fashion, we would plan to go on vacation like two days and before the next podcast, uh, before or after, um, the live stream would actually happen. We're planning on our part, I would say. <laughs> but to be fair, I did not expect a Tuesday live stream. I was kind of banking on the Friday one, the, the week before. Um, yeah. Being Toronto. <laughs> but um, was there anything there that you were like particularly excited about or interested in? I'm kind of interested in, in the uh, the utility stuff, how they're how they're uh, putting in the the different perks uh, and uh, abilities you buy as the as the ranger. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of have a gripe with what the what they're currently doing with the with the movement ability. Because uh, in in their stream they said, "Hey, this uh, this ability is here to showcase how the ranger is super mobile, but then it can only go backwards unless you spend a point in it to go sideways in every every other direction." I don't like that. I don't like that at all. Um, yeah. I played that in Swotor uh, on a on a trooper on one of my alts, and that was their movement ability. It just jet back. That was terrible, especially in a PvP game. Yeah, that's fair. And hopefully, you know that input would help with uh, you know creating a better ranger. What about you, Vertex? Yeah, thanks for stopping by there, Wizzy. You have a good rest. Hey. Um. With uh, with that specifically, I mean, I was gonna say that I I had the same reaction when he mentioned that, but at the same time, I was thinking, you know, it does kind of work in a way because it is it is by spending a point you do power up the ability, but it mm -hmm. at least gives you kind of like the 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 default David configuration of you know you have an escape ability that you can jump backwards because I think doesn't wow the wow hunter have the same thing where you just jump straight back. Um, so it's like multiple games Possibly. have that kind of 
that kind of movement it's been abilities. A while since I that. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty yeah. sure they do the same thing. They just jump straight back, and it's kind of one of those things like. It's an easy, it's an easy envisionment of how somebody would jump if something in front of them was coming at them and they need to just get out of there real quick. But then if you I do mean, spend I... a point in it, you can get, you know, a boost. Kind of like uh, a tank skill where you add a point to get like an extra 2% defense because you're better with shields now. Yeah. I mean, I can kind of see where, where they're coming from because they have a, they have a root ability that jumps over the enemy and then you can jump back, I guess, but I don't know. I don't know. I, I, personally, I would like to see them be as mobile as possible and do something similar to the rogue with their omnidirectional, where they do their thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sorry, one second. My um, my phone is dying apparently. So I'll be no. a moment. But um, I know. <laughs> um, real quick, we do have an ad. I think was oh, news. I Never mind. I it. Um, I did not see that happen. So um, real quick though, for mine, I can't really talk about it because. We're going into the um, the next segment of it, but did you have any other questions uh, for him before we get to that point? Because mine mine is under the uh, one of the topics. So. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you know it's really hard when we're looking at all this stuff to not be like, hey, so what do you what do you think about the the whatever and whatnot? <laughs> um, so hey, I guess I, I guess one question I would have is. As a guild, are you folks trying to find a specific biome or a specific point in the world since the, the, the map's been kind of out there? Are you hoping to make a home in a node in a specific area of the world? Ooh, that's a difficult question. Uh, it's much contention, in fact. Mm -hmm. um, there there are uh, some camps that want to be like in in the zones where the, the Alpha 2 is going to be, like when we get to launch. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's other people that would rather really love to go to the the ancient elven homelands, which is a later time. Yeah, it's, that's what I almost assumed is that uh, someone with, let's say, a full tilt elven guild would, would try to look for those uh, elven type areas that, that they would identify with. And even like right next to, you know, the old castles and the old like decrepit ruins of the... Uh, you know, the forefathers, so to say. Yeah, I mean, uh, there is that, but uh, I think the more important thing for us uh, mechanically would be finding a uh, a science node. If we can mm -hmm. find one that that has access to water, since we're going to be battling with another node to to race to get access to a harbor, uh, I'd rather do do that than than that necessarily focus in absolutely having to be the elven area although it would be kind of cool to have that cool uh i don't know shining uh shining white gold city on the on the on the water yeah you know the the roman elves <laughs> of empyrean <laughs> absolutely absolutely i know uh, i i suppose even for like a on a lore and roleplay thing as long as you're somewhat near so you can you can kind of swing by and salvage and stuff or or whatnot but you know you're still you're a new generation so you must strike out on your own right 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 um, we are holding the the tr uh, strength and traditions of the Pyrian kingdom long long since gone <laughs> I like that because you know there's like do I follow the lore do I follow like what na runs naturally for us kind of thing I think uh, for us, uh, we're going to try and try and bring as much uh, much of the lore stuff for the Pyrian Kingdom before the before the collapse and then the split. Mm. Okay, okay. Like we're we're okay. kind of running we're kind of running with uh, like the the whole Roman aspect where the 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 Empyreans were like the the city and military, where the Pyri were like kind of the outskirts and the uh, the first responders to any threats to the the, from the outside. Oh, I kind of like that. I kind of okay. like that idea. I kind of yeah. feel to it. I'm actually um, all the elves. Not to like put it on my my attention, but like um, when I've been role playing, I've been role playing like as myself, um, having like shifted away from my clan over time on Sanctus and trying to find more Pyrian elves because I don't really know many other people for role play. So I'm like, 
I'm just kind of out in the <laughs> open. <laughs> you know, I found that like, uh, you know, we we wanted to go for more of a focus for the Empyrean, but we found so many uh, Pyri. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's cool either way. We got elves. Yeah. I, I've got my preference. Uh, like, I'm I'm gonna be an Empyrean. Uh, my wife's gonna be a Pyri, so that's gonna be fun. Yee, that's awesome. And we are doing good, Roka. Um, I actually would like to say that we are having an ad here in just a moment, and we can't really snooze it much more than this because they give us a limited number of snoozes. Um, however, coming soon, we will be um, uh, live both here on Twitch and on YouTube. So um, if you end up not liking the whole ad thing over here, like me, completely fine. Come and join us over on YouTube. Um, but during the ad break, I'm going to go ahead and do a quick little uh, breakdown of some uh, upcoming things and um, like for the, the for the podcast. And we'll be right back into the, the podcast for tonight's episode. <laughs> Welcome in. How's it going, gamers? It's going. All right. So, um. What are you laughing at over there? Oh, the how's it going, gamers? Wow. Love it. Hello, 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 yeah. and welcome in. Hello, hello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so, by the way, for the upcoming year, um, it's <laughs> uh, we're going to be doing our normal parlor game night on Mondays. And then on Tuesday, instead of us doing our podcast tonight going forward, we'll be doing them on Tuesdays instead um, because I've been working with Vertech and uh, we're looking at getting some side quests for that freehold income. Um, if it's anything like Ashes, it's hard to get. So you need the freehold <laughs> freehold side gig. <laughs> mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. But yes, so that's why we're moving it over to Tuesdays. And then on Wednesday, we are doing a Tavern Chat styled podcast known as Tavern Talk. And um, we're going to have uh, more of a, a chilled and laid back. And it's also going to be IRL. So you get, get to see our lovely faces once more. I know it's been a while for some of you. Um, so that'll be fun. And then finally, Vertec will be doing Mead Quest on Friday um, because I will be busy uh, out doing quests. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and that also leaves us Saturday and Sunday to kind of do whatever we want to do. If we want to go out and explore the world around us, or if we want to hang out with our guild or stream for, with you guys, it's all open and we don't have to feel bad about canceling or moving things anymore. So, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, that, yeah. that is what to expect this year. Um, speaking of this year, we are doing our first ever Content Creators Summit. Woo! Mm. Um, that will be on the 20th, and we have uh, 12 content creators that are joining us. And uh, we will be having um, people... Yeah, I have to go do daily quests, unfortunately. Um, but we'll have people kind of talking to us from their perspective as a content creator and kind of going around the table. So that's going to be a, a couple hour long um, kind of thing. Wow, five years. That's pretty long. Hey, that's thanks for almost as out. long as we've been having the Golden Feather. So, yeah, yeah, thank you for that. And glad to have you back in. And uh, let's see, for the final announcement is we have a couple of community nights coming up because you guys hit those sub goals. So we're working on those. But now to get back to our previously scheduled podcast. <laughs> <laughs> um, since you are our guest, Desi, what would you like <laughs> to have uh, be the first topic? You get to choose. Ooh, you know, I I have some I have some opinions on all of these things. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. That's, that's good. good. That's good. <laughs> uh, let's start with the start with the mayoral one. The mayoral one. All right. So the first segment we're going to go into, which is mayorship and taxes, and we know that in the node system there are going to be um, mayors, and then those mayors can choose the taxes. But in this particular case. Um, one of the people that we've recently had the pleasure of hanging out with more often, um, his name is Boxstream, um, put a post out saying that it would be really cool to have like a five minute before the node or the siege happens 
where the mayor can give a in-person or in-voice uh, speech, and it would be something that everyone would be able to hear. And there's some talk back and forth about like teleporting them and or having it like be area wide for their side of the fight. Um, but what are your thoughts? Okay, so I'm I'm definitely against the the teleport thing. Although for RP, it would be pretty nice. Yeah. But um, if you're if you're preparing for a siege and you're you're in the middle of like the, your last little preparation steps, the last thing that you need to do is be teleported into a stage to hear somebody talk. Mm-hmm. So if it's if you're gonna have something to give like a buff, have it be area wide. Yes. And hell, you could have the enemy hear it too. As a debuff. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. But, I mean, if you, I mean, it, it's kind of cool in a way, but then you also open it up to now you have to, now you have to moderate that kind of thing. And if, if you're putting that, that open voice into it, then what other messes can you get into? Uh, mm-hmm. we, we did have some people in some of those forums being like, I'll just become a mayor just to tank everything. So I'll just get this as toxic as hell. No, we don't want that. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, what are your thoughts? Hey, go ahead. I think it would be neat and potentially something that they would only need to do a little bit of a tweak to. Um, and that would be, they're already talking about having... Um, Proximity chat in taverns, right? So what oh, if yeah, they made the right. proximity really large and they gave only somebody with mayor capabilities the option to use a specific podium and using that podium logs them into the chat. They can un- broadcast their voice for five minutes and it's just a large proximity that fades as you get farther away. That could actually be pretty neat. Okay. Yeah. I like that. That's awesome. And then, and then we could add the debuff thing. If they're if the enemy is too close when you're doing it, they get a debuff. Their morale starts going a down. Yeah, debuff. yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Or I even like the that. person who ah, oh, you know what? Ah, ha, ha, ha. Even outside the gates, there could be a similar podium for whoever uh, initiated the siege, and they could do the same thing. Oh, oh, counter so counter propaganda. Yeah, yeah, they could work up their own team's morale, and then if people are trying to play spy or whatever, their morale is going to debuff them, or the, the their morale is going to be debuffed because they're too close and trying to sneak in, and they're hearing all the motivational speech from the other team. Hmm? Yeah. Even if there's not a speech going on, you can you can just have that have that rolling like you're too close. Interesting. Interesting. <laughs> well, there was a lot of discussion within the. Um, forum there on well you could just use discord and like why would you want like voiceover uh like invoice in game kind of thing um and i really liked that there was somebody who essentially said the idea of building a product expecting a third party product to always be there is kind of not a great idea and so i personally prefer the whole option of well if you don't want this you can turn it off and you can go use the third party thing or Mm -hmm. even being able to have it where um maybe you can broadcast in both because i mean again with a mayor siege like that you know you would want to be able to hear it but you're not necessarily always going to be in one giant discord like some people would rather just stick to their little tiny this is our our guild discord or my friend the guild discord only and like they may not want to be in this huge server-wide discord listening to the siege plus i don't even know if it would handle 50 people in a discord <laughs> call oh man that'd be ridiculous <laughs> so you know things like that yeah and you can't always take third parties as a given but you can always turn off settings in, in a game that you don't want so yep that's I mean, kind of the, where i stand on but, the topic of like knowing if that the the thing's going to be available Right. When we started. It was Ventrilo. Right. Exactly. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, Ventrilo is still around, that. but yeah. But also, the other thing is with the um, area wide. I prefer the area wide because if I'm not frontlining, if I'm in the back and I'm like preparing stuff, I'm, I don't know, doing alchemist stuff. <laughs> um, 
I would rather like to be able to hear it, and it also sound kind of cool if you could hear it kind of echo, almost like off in the oh. distance. Yeah. Like, Today, my brethren, we <laughs> shall take this castle by stage. You know, like you know, just oh. off in the distance, and you're just like do 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 do. I'm cooking potions. I don't know. Alchemist These orcs Firebomb. have been stirring up so much trouble. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like a stage thing. Yeah, you could probably do that. But I imagine you'd want something better, like Vent had, where you could have the person who could talk to all groups. Like, so the overarching GM or raid lead, um, you would branch off into smaller groups. Maybe the healers or a couple of people would be in their own little thing. And then you had the overarching person who could be like, all right, everybody, this, like, stage three is coming in. Watch this, watch that. Um, and then, like, pop into in specific chats and be like, hey, you're stepping in the red too much. I need you to just get out of it. Like, I just liked that benefit a lot, though. So. And trap yeah, it no. if you could do something like that. That'd be super cool, but also intense. Probably. It would be. It'd probably be really super intense. <laughs> but I mean, we are using Amazon Web Services, so I don't know. Sure, I never know. <laughs> um, but on that note, with the whole mayor sieging things, let's talk about something that is probably on a lot of people's minds right now, and that is taxes. Oh boy. Um. Yeah. Taxes. Oh boy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Um, whether in game or in real life, taxes are not always that fun, but, um, let's just hope your mirror is nice and does not give you like a 30% tax grief. Um, and oh, that is what you. this Reddit post is talking about from, um, Arzo. Is anyone else extremely worried about the inclusion of taxes within the game? <laughs> um, to keep it short, taxation is one of the worst experiences in real life. And for some reason, they thought that it would be a great addition into the game. What positive experience does taxation add? But the bigger problem sits in that it's extremely bad for new players, solo players, or otherwise the majority. A few people can become powerful enough to become lords and start taxing the rest. They can then use that to become more powerful and keep the rest down. Congratulations, you've repli replicated feudalism, which is miserable for about 100% of the population. And um, they go on to talk about even New World. Um, a notable example being New World um, <laughs> had some good things going on, but his biggest flaws was the fact that it handled a lot of a handful of guilds just dominated the entire server. So, um, for those of you that are worried that you're gonna have a mayor like Steven did in the most one of the most recent dev <laughs> dev live streams where the <laughs> tax rate was crazy, um, <laughs> what would you guys what would you guys say to those people? Or what what do you think of that? I don't think and they I have would, to worry about it at all. Um, I would like to add this in here as well for anybody oh, who's new. No, you're good. I'm talking about in the chat. You're good. So I don't think they have to worry about it at all because uh, the mayor can't take those taxes. Uh, that's that's like the biggest hold against that. Uh, those taxes are, are for building up the town and giving it defenses. Um, mm -hmm. And if you have a, a mayor that can't control and balance you know, the, the tax rate what what they what they need and what the people can give um you're not gonna have citizens and your node's gonna get destroyed yep so yeah when we made it can be changed and it only for town building um it's so for town good. buildings there's also a uh, tavern taxes so if you come in and play some parlor games in the local golden feather tavern we get a cut of that to help keep things running you know since we're hosting the games in the tavern gotta keep the lights yeah. on you know Right. Yeah, there's also the the castle taxes from like guilds, mm -hmm. guilds warring and whatnot, like the PvP castles. Um, those the taxes are interesting. They are split when the castle changes hand. Whatever tax money is sitting in the coffers, some stays with the guild and some stays with the castle. But the thing is, there are so many benefits to a guild managing that well. It benefits everybody around the castle. The guild members are probably going to try to get um, freeholds near the castle. So they don't want to get taxed and just be donating all their money to the guild, right? They, they mm -hmm. got to still make some kind of money. But it's going to influence, uh, what is it, uh, crop yields and resources, uh, some events and whatnot. Uh, because Extending of the way the taxes sometimes are. sometimes I think is one of them. 
Uh, potentially. Oh, I didn't that, know you could extend it. seasons. That's cool. Yeah, that might be a thing. Um, I'm going to be honest, I hadn't heard that one, or I don't recall hearing it, so if that's a thing, that'd be kind of neat, too. But there's so uh, many things that... The, um, that was a while ago, yeah. <laughs> I'm going, I'm going, I will need to look into that one. That sounds interesting, to be able to, to kind of kick my favorite season out for an extra couple of days or a week. But yeah, it's, it, there's, there's benefits mm -hmm. to them managing it well, and you know what? Once a month, there is the opportunity for everybody in the area to forcefully take it out of a guild's hands. And if you're on a server where yeah. a guild is able to just absolutely dominate one castle, then, I don't know, li live in a different area. And then they or won't get your tax. get all your money. buddies and go take that place. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, in theory, in theory, something like, uh, you know, some of the bigger guilds, uh, we'll go ahead and leave, leave them nameless, but some of them that have dominated other games... And entire servers on other games before probably going to do that so you either might need to just find another server because you know it's going to go that way or just live in a different area and do most of your hunting elsewhere or just go about life in general make your money how yeah. you can yeah that's fair with that for me the taxes are um interesting it's kind of cool i like it in terms of you put out money to get a freehold. You put out um, a space on that freehold to have a um, to have a like what do you call it? A tavern or um, a place to make weapons, whatever it is, crafting thing you chose. Um, but also, like the the freehold is taxed based on the number of permits placed on that freehold, and I thought that was interesting. Like it all comes back to like something and it helps to pull money into the node so that people are not necessarily putting their own personal resources into increasing the um, nodes capabilities. It's all coming from the taxes. It's not like the person over here is bleeding money into the node versus being a shared thing. I don't know. It's one of those things I'd like to see how it goes, but also like a lot of people said, um, you know, you could always just kick the mayor for <laughs> going crazy with the taxes. Um, Matt Hunter says, mm -hmm. I mean, if it if there's a large guild that controls a node and a majority of the guild members are in a node, the taxes would be low or none and any um, who happen to be there also benefit. So the, the taxes would be low or none and anybody who's there would benefit from it. Because again, it's kind of cool because you can, it, as long as you are, I believe, a citizen, this is me guessing. If you're a citizen of a node, you have access to all the crafting stations of a node kind of thing. Um, versus like freeholds and stuff like that. So, I don't know. It's interesting. Yeah, no. Um, the one thing that I don't think I had heard any mention of is, and it, it may have and I just forgot, but uh, the guild castles, the PvP, I know there were like three weeks where you can start to build things up and level up uh, this and level up that and whatnot. But do you recall hearing if after the castle siege, if it starts back at ground zero or do they maintain whatever they still had at the end and they just need to rebuild again? Um, so you cut out a little bit there for me, but you're asking if what the pool, the money pool is maintained no. or if it goes back to zero? So basically of the buildings that get built up the around buildings. the castle. So yeah, the castle, there's three weeks in the month where the guild can take tax money and whatnot, and they can spend it on strengthening the castle's defenses, uh, strengthening the nodes around the castle, etc. Uh, and okay. then the fourth week is war week. That's the, that's the siege. You go to try to take over the castle, then you have that one uh, like at the end of the week or something like that. Um, but... During those three weeks after a siege has been completed, I was curious if they need to rebuild all the defenses from the beginning or if they maintain everything, um, whatever was left standing at the end of the siege, whatever didn't get destroyed. I'm going to look on the wiki for that. Um, but while I do that, I'm going to go ahead and go one step further with the castle taxes and NPC caravans. Mm -hmm. Um 
This is also from Reddit from DK Slatter later, LOL. <laughs> um, <laughs> so can NBC caravans that are generated for collecting castle taxes be raided? And if so, will the tax gold that they are carrying be lootable? Um, they tried looking through the wiki, wiki but um, stars uh, says kind of responded to them, says that they can be attacked and they do need to be protected by con the controlling guild of a castle in order to get paid the last time that we heard about it. Um, so like, what are your thoughts on that? Um, I'm going to go look up your question about the, the node um, siege thing. Buildings. I think mm -hmm. that's correct. Uh, I think that that's the last one I remember. And yeah, if you if you're having money moving around, you're gonna want to protect that anyway, or you're just gonna lose it. Like, that's free mm -hmm. money if you don't. Yeah. And, um, yeah. Yeah. It's it's interesting how all that's gonna work. <laughs> From what I know, yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be lootable to a degree at least. Um, who knows, they might do something along the lines of uh, it being tainted. Um, like the, what was it, the glint? Tainted glint mm, or oh yeah. whatever it was, stolen mm -hmm. glint. Where it's actually, it ends up being worth less. So like gold coins are scattered in the woods when you destroy the caravan so they just can't <laughs> be recovered. Um, some some knoll or troll runs around and grabs them and runs away with it or something. Um, yeah. Yeah. Oh, man, that, that would be a crazy mini game. Absolutely. That'd be fun. Like, um, <laughs> kind of like in, I think I saw it in Wildstar when I was playing, and they had to chase the loot goblin around to get extra loot. So, like, oh, a little yeah, loot yeah. goblin comes out and picks up some of the loot, and you gotta chase them and kill them. <laughs> little mini, like, raid boss. Um, oh, Addy man. says, I'd imagine that the node control and taxes are going to be handled like they are in most New World servers. Unless there's a major guild that just dominates everything, and it's and is confident they won't be taken out, people usually don't raise the taxes too much in order to not have people start a coup. That way, most players don't mind too much whoever has control since they can do everything um, at a normal cost. Um, and then to add into that Mad Hatter says, next thing you know, a dragon comes for the gold. <laughs> <laughs> um, Let's see, the reason so I was asking... Oh, oh sorry. Bad, sorry. Oh, uh, yeah, the reason I was asking specifically about the castle sieges rather than uh, like regular node sieges was because if they are able to just rebuild whatever was destroyed only, they don't have to keep starting at ground zero, I could absolutely see a guild taking over a castle, right? And they bike up some taxes really quick to build up money to, during those first three weeks, build up as much as they can to gain a foothold. Then after that mm -hmm. foothold gained, they're going to drop the taxes back down so that nobody gets off and kicks them out. No, that sounds that sound interesting. Um, you know, I, Vertec, I definitely agree with you. Um, it should it mm -hmm. should drop down to zero. It, it's a castle. You know, you've won the castle. You know, you can take the taxes from that castle. You know, personally, you can just rip it out of the out of the thing. But you really want to spend it in those th in uh, keeping it going, right? Right. Um, yeah, more investment into the castle while you're keeping it. Yeah, exactly. Um, going back to the node building destruction thing. Um, so I, I posted the wiki link up there um, with the anchor tag, so it goes straight to the section I'm reading. Node buildings, including player housings, will have hit points and can be damaged or destroyed by different systems, including weather systems, by the way, in case you didn't know, or a reminder. There's hazardous events like tornadoes and hurricanes that could happen. Um, mayors have the ability to demolish constructed node buildings. This will have a node mandate cost and will require player uh, buy-in via a vote. Um, and also, um, I'm trying to look if a node siege if a node siege is successful or if buildings otherwise take significant damage, they are destroyed and appear as rubble on the plot they occupied. I, okay, I think if it's Vertek not on your talking. guys' end, then that's fine. Sorry, I won't break it up again. I'll try to. I'll try to write through it. I think. Uh, I think what Vertek was talking about was uh, the when you're sieging a castle, there's uh, points of interest 
you can you can build up and then to get bo- bonuses to attacking the castle you have to destroy those in the siege i think that's oh i talking. thought he was asking what happened to the buildings after a node was sieged like if they stay up or if they go back to ground zero yes uh, all all of the above um if the okay. if the <laughs> defenses that are put up and and whatnot if those stay in place or if let's say like randomly nobody attacks the castle nobody does they leave it all alone would every single thing that you built up in the previous weeks just stay there that way you wouldn't need to rebuild it or would they fade away and you need to start from ground zero again and rebuild if nobody attacked the castle in the first place yeah and life would go on as normal and as long as you maintain those buildings they'll stay there well okay so think about this you know the extra defenses you'd put up we saw we saw the little uh spike walls in the in the village node right Let's say in a siege those spike walls will be put in place to block off entire corridors those would have to be moved out of the way when you're not in siege hmm. so any any kind of defenses that would limit limit movement would have to be probably torn down There's or moved a lot that we haven't even seen with defending or attacking with sieges like we haven't mm-hmm. seen an update on that in, in like a few years. But, right. That's so um, true. Anything could be possible at this moment, I'd say. I feel like it's a little too in the weeds at the moment. Theory craft. Yes, theory craft. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's already uh, eight minutes to eight, so I'm going to try and go on to um, the AK 47, AKA Ranger archetype. <laughs> As I was calling it, um, the uh, 360 no scope. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what did I say the other night? I was like 360 no scope. Uh, something ranger. I forgot what it was. But anyway, um, I feel like the multi attacker that was really fast in a very oops, that's the wrong one. In a very um, unexpected way. Um, I was not, I was not quite ready for that, for sure. (laughs) Um, (laughs) and, um, Marwin on Reddit goes, Sherpo equals AK-47? Question mark? (laughs) Um, oh, that did not have the link in it. Sorry. Let me just do this. There you go. Um, so the firing speed of the Sherpo reminded me of my old days in Grand Theft Auto Vice City when I pulled an AK-47 on a certain gang during a mission. I understand the short bow looks appealing these days, especially the pew 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 animations and sound effects. But I can already sense that after some time, people won't refer to this class as a ranger, but rather pew pew class. <laughs> um, but in general, like, I love the ideas between like all um all the different types of weapons that you can use and how that changes your gameplay but that was my only nag for this last live stream i loved everything else but the the speed at which he was firing just seemed unreal and i get it's a game that's fantasy based but i was also like but how do you justify that with the fantasy thing like i could see pulling a bunch of arrows at once and letting go a bunch of them fantasy wise but like pew pew pew, pew like at that speed that's just inhuman <laughs> well, maybe maybe certain races are a little fat. I don't know. Just yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the poor human guy that goes, doom, 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 and then like the, I don't know, an elf. Doom, 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 doom. <laughs> Humans like I got five. Uh, I got twenty five. What? <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that that's way way too fast. I, I totally agree with you. Um. Like if the if the goal is thirty second kills, that's not going to happen if you have two archers. Yeah, I'm a healer. I'm not going to be able to even touch mitigating any of that damage coming in. Yeah, that's you have to be ready for that. And if there's a good enough visual indicator, you can be ready for that when you train. But I don't know. Protect. What's your thought? I think that, um, yeah, that auto attack, quote unquote, auto attack combo is just way too fast. That's like, 
a special skill burst attack type of uh, type of speed there because it's just just wow and, and I know and so here's the other thing is you know there's uh, some of the comments on that thread we're talking about um, right now we're looking at systems and how they look and feel versus you know mm -hmm. balance or whatever but I, I had zero care about how much damage it was doing it's literally how it looks and feels it looks and feels way too fast to be like an auto constant attack um because if, if you have an archer there just sitting there shooting i think it was literally like 20 arrows a second just yeah. that's just that's that's a that's a special attack that's called a skill that you devote points to and you launch it off once every like 10 seconds or something maybe you know what that kind of reminded me of mm. Mm -hmm. the the magic wand and alpha one <laughs> that was crazy that was so crazy we were running around with somebody who was playing as the mage and it was just like pew, 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 pew. like it was so fast it was crazy <laughs> it was literally hey, the machine the gun wand. welcome in yeah. and have a good night addy but yeah and, no oh my gosh and yeah rest well addy and welcome cheffy um oh. Yeah, honestly, I would I would be perfectly happy if each each arrow did more damage and they fired far fewer of them. I'm sure that'll get bal balanced out when we get to like the the betas and stuff. Yeah. 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 Well, speaking of things that'll get balanced out by the time we get to beta, um, we have the base archetype utility suggestions, and um, this is by Chonkers on the forums. And um, if you look at the forms, by the way, Intrepid did some changes to it. If you see stars, um, I think that's a rank of how many times you've posted and or interacted. Um, and it's to help limit some of the bot issues that they had going on. So that should be gone by now. Um, this is what they're trying out. But Tonkin says, uh, Bard, buffs, and reduces, re buffs that reduce cooldowns could be thematic. Cleric, a siphoning curse that allows allies to heal from damaging and target um, the target that could be interesting um, or withering curse that max reduces maximum health increasingly over time that would also be cool then there's rogue arrays of poison debuffs that reduce healing damage done movement mitigation etc summoner a, a prismatic amplification debuff that increases the effect for every damage type dealt to the target Tank, an AoE mitigation buff that is stronger and lasts longer for every ally affected, and some other things. Um, what are your thoughts on that in general? Well, I, I have one that I, that I wanted in every game. Okay. I'm a cleric. Yes. I want to be able to say I have this whole raid that's that only a couple people are taking damage, right? Mm -hmm. I want to take everyone's health and redistribute it so that everyone's at 50% or something. So all the people that are not getting hit and they're they're perfectly fine, they're following mechanics right or they're they're just outside whatever whatever radius that they need to be in. Mm -hmm. All their health gets siphoned into a pool and put back on everybody so so that tank over there that's that's keeping us alive has 2% all and I'm out of cooldowns and I'm like, "Uh, they're going to die." Pop it. Yeah. <laughs> everyone's redistributed then i can be like okay we have a little bit of breathing room keep them up and then the people that just got siphoned they're like oh we lost health i can be like okay all right here you go have have a little bit there you go you're good <laughs> you're not even taking damage <laughs> i like that yeah i've liked i've liked the idea of abilities like that and especially with this cleric the giver and taker of life balancer of life so to say that would be absolutely thematic. Now the question is, should that be percentage based or number? Like how many health points you have? I mean, one's going to help help tanks a lot more and one's going to hurt everybody else a lot more. Okay, so how about this? Um, it, it would only take a per... No? Ah. It would, cause you only have a certain amount of pool for health for mm -hmm. everybody. Um, hmm. Like take the total health pool, uh, yeah, the total health current pool and, and possible, and drop like put put a little mathematic number in there. <laughs> like it comes out to fifty six percent raid wide, 
And so then yeah. it balances everybody to 56%. Boom. Hmm. Done. Yeah, so it's kind of kind of what I'm hoping. Like, something around, like, even for everybody. And then, yeah. And then be able to heal people up uh, as they... That'd be cool. <laughs> All right, range. Your job is now to be a life battery. Don't get hit. You're going to save the yes. tank's life. Yes, oh exactly. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you are All the mercs are dying due to their small health pool. <laughs> oh no. Um, this actually reminds me of the dev discussion for this month. And if you have not seen it yet, it's actually on utilities. So um, please feel free to go over there. They're asking um, what utility skills do you feel are most important? Are there certain scenarios that should require specific ones? And I don't have enough uh, MMORP knowledge to really answer this, so I answered with just random stuff that I do I can pull from, which is TTRPGs. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah. But uh, what are what are your thoughts in general? Is there any specific utility that you feel like should be considered or should be like situational? Um, Pocket Star says, I feel like I would be comparable to art, Bard's ult in League. Um, it's one of the super utility skills that every uh, every now and then it completely trolls everyone. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Aww, Chaffy! Thank you! Chaffy, oh, thank I you did much. Not, mine did not do the... I don't know. We might need to work on that. Yep. Um, maybe that wasn't added into the... Um, oh, that's right. We didn't add it to the bot one. No. Yeah. It is! It is on the horizon! <laughs> yes. Yes. It is indeed. <laughs> We're almost um, there. Wait, we can see it from here. I can choose myself. Look at that. <laughs> I forgot <laughs> how to do that. Um, <laughs> soon. Um, and... Also, I just wanted to add for anybody who uses Twitter still... Um, Here's this uh, Twitter post that we put. We're going to be talking about this next Wednesday. Just just putting it out there. Just putting it out there. All right, so what uh, what utility skills have we figured out that we're thinking of? Um, First, I'm going to have to give it to you real quick. Okay, okay, okay. So um, I <laughs> absolutely fell in love with the... I mean, I didn't use it a lot, uh, mainly because okay. it just wasn't really a great place for it. But uh, during APOC, there was that big red shield wall that would pop up. I couldn't get it to work well for me, but I love the idea of it. And I would love to have had more practice with it. But I was terrible with the BR uh, setup. So I would always get just absolutely destroyed before I could make effective use of it. But I really love the idea of having that in a PvP battle where I could be a little bit more strategic than... Hey, someone just jumped around the corner and I'm dead now because it's all everyone for themselves. Yay. Right. <laughs> okay. So I'm I'm really focusing on the cleric, so I'm sorry, I'm very very uh one track in that part. Um, oh no, you're all good. <laughs> um in Final Fantasy fourteen, uh the Sage class has some cool utility with its kit where it does like bubbles for its allies. And so, uh, like, like if you're if you bubble the tank, for example, um, it helps them get uh, get threat, and when they do damage, they heal themselves a little bit. Mm -hmm. So it kind of gives mm -hmm. them a leech. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Uh, and then it also gives them a bubble, so when they take damage, it it uh, it mitigates that as well. Mm -hmm. it's like a dual purpose uh, kind of utility. Yeah. I love you know, it. Something I like that. Something like that works out decent for... I guess there was another skill that I had in mind for a tank. And that was uh, something almost like last standish, where the tank could get more defensive boost based on uh, the number of people surrounding him, number of enemies surrounding him. So if he literally taunts everything and then pops that, in a PvE setting, that's going to give him insane defensive cooldown right there. Um, but you'd also be using it mm -hmm. against... Uh, you know as many enemies as possible so in a pvp setting that would also be great but it would give people the opportunity to try to okay let's focus on somebody else for the next five seconds while this tank is is absolutely almost untouchable because 30 of us are trying to kill him yeah oh, yeah that'd be great oh there's another one um so uh i'm gonna take this one from an anime 
uh, Log Horizon. Uh, okay. Anchor Howl. Basically, what it is is a tank does this uh, does this scream thing, and it, it forces all the. I mean, I know people don't like the, the the force thing, but it forces them to look at look at him. Uh, and if mm-hmm. they walk away, if they if they do decide to turn away and and start moving away, it gets mm-hmm. a free massive damage attack from the tank. Right. Mm. So they mm-hmm. they can choose to go away, but. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, like oh that. my gosh. Um, <clears throat> for me, um, yeah, I like Lock Horizon too. For me, I ended up responding to the dub discussion. I said it's hard to answer when not being aware of like the full list of options, just because my brain can wonder for a- ages, and it'd be hard to ever actually answer the question because I'd be too busy coming up with a <laughs> billion and one ideas. I do enjoy a lot of utility skills within TTRPG genres, though. Um, one that comes to mind is the Pass Without Trace from D and D which I could see like a Bardex Rogue offering as a utility within an Ashes. Um, I think anything that ultimately allows one to interact with the world around them is awesome, such as pathfinding or clearing poisonous gas. Considering that Ashes intends to be player driven, having an arsenal to choose from would lend a hand to unique builds and use cases in my mind. Um, so if you want to, again, going back to role play, if you want to be the person that is known for alchemy and known for this and known for that maybe you'll want to try as a cleric to go more of an antidote wing clearing curses and clearing poisonous gas out of the way kind of thing um and just have more options within building yourself as a person as a player um considering that ashes intends to be player driven having an arsenal to choose from would lend a hand to unique builds and use cases and i would like to see the secondary being able to offer interesting new options or augments to utility skills for the prim- primary class, much like it does to the regular skills. I think that would be cool to see it open up um, either, for example, if you are doing a pathfinding and if you're doing like Ranger X Ranger, your pathfinding skills are better. But if you're Ranger X, I don't know, Summoner, um, you, maybe you can find elemental paths better. It makes it a little easier for you to roll that check. Or Ranger X Rogue, you can find hidden people a little easier. I don't know. Something like that. The, and that's where I think oh, the, cool. the combination uh, class augments could be so nifty. Could be so nifty. Because, yeah. like, looking at the, the combination of the skills that Des and I were talking about here with a tank being like say tank summoner and just you have more control over multiple things right so you could do an mm-hmm. aoe taunt get more defense based on however many things are nearby you and then if they decide to turn away or run away you get a buff against them yeah so it would be great with multiple like a giant pack that you're trying to go up against but once you're one on one that all three of those are going to be kind of bad yeah <laughs> in, in oh, a one on one or 1v2 even it's going to be kind of bad in a giant group fight, that would be such a clutch build. It would be yeah. balance and choice. Oh, so remember how they were talking about uh, synergy attacks? Yes. Having uh, having those abilities do uh, like build off of each other, like synergy the... utility abilities. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. So you got your you got your anchor howl thing. You got your uh, you know the thing that does a fear effect so it, it kind of encourages them to go away um and maybe maybe you have a trap from the from the rogue or the or the ranger that pops up if they go through i don't know like a uh, what is, what is that what is that ranger spell um as a dm i, I am failing at life um <laughs> <laughs> Matt Hatter says it sounds uh, like spikes. you took the sentinel feet from D&D <laughs> yes yes <laughs> <laughs> we are D&D nerds here <laughs> nerds uh, spike growth that's what it is Ah. you laid a spike growth and you, and yes. you have the tank anchor howl and the other one do a fear forces them into the spike growth Oh. Ooh. Ooh. that's messy I like it I like that. That's awesome. Okay, so I know that we are starting to get some peoples in here. <laughs> um, <laughs> but we are 
heading towards the last part of our podcast. So the next segment is going to be fan focus, um, just to kind of keep it as close to an hour as possible, especially for those of you watching us over on YouTube later. Doing it for you guys. Doing it for you guys. Um, for you. <laughs> <laughs> so I wanted to share this. And uh, while I share this, I think it'd be fun for you, Desi, to talk about it. So this is uh, from Scar Scarctic. I'm not sure how to say this person's name. He created a world map where he mapped out where the different five primary races are and their five castles could possibly be. And Duzzy, I think you had some things to say about this. Oh, man. Uh, so he <laughs> majorly messed up on one of them because we okay. were told where one of those castles is. Okay. We have it on the map. Uh, yes. I, f I forget what stream it was. But that middle, uh, that middle island in between the continents... Yes. That's the only castle we know absolutely where it is. Okay. Um, and then we know from the lore, uh, the, the Dwarven Castle is probably in the Dune, Dunes and Kill Mountains. Mm -hmm. um, if I had to guess... Okay, so this is where it gets a little shaky with the lore and the old maps. Right. Because uh, on the old map, uh, Amera, which is the... the capital of the Pyrian kingdom, the Elven, Elven kingdom. Mm -hmm. Um, it was, uh, kind of like if you're, if you're looking at that map, it's, uh, it's a little concave that comes up, uh, directly South of the, of the lake in the middle of that looks like an eye. Okay. Yeah. I see it. Um, mm -hmm. that's where Amara is. That's their capital. I don't know if the capital got moved. Okay, um, that's right. So the castle would probably be close to where the capital is. But it makes perfect sense that it would be on that island now, and because it's in the middle of the, it's in the middle of the magical forest, which so we, another we piece have two of lore. castles on an island at that point. Then I know two island castles. That's crazy. Uh, well, think about this also. I don't know if they're going to continue with this with the lore because remember the uh, I think it was two uh, twenty four hour or twenty eight hour live streams ago. It <laughs> 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 was good. <laughs> Stayed up for most of it. Yes, um, those are difficult. <laughs> by the way, was rooting for you and uh, and Vladis last time. Yes. Oh, thank you. But uh, uh, anyway, so the uh, the castle would be in that in that island there. So I know. I know. <laughs> thank you, Chaffee. I don't know if the human one would be in the Jundark. It would I'd probably be in in the Kalen Riverlands since the. Yeah, I feel like the Jundark would be the Pyre personally. I I disagree. Yeah, um, because because we got to remember before before the calamity there were four nations. Mm. Uh, they may to me that just looks like the most dense of like <clears throat> trees. So if you if you looked at the old map before they changed it, uh, the darker green forest mm -hmm. next to you. Oh man, I was I was gonna I was gonna touch on something real quick. So uh, where the where the Imperian castle would be. That's yeah. also the magical forest, which doesn't get winter. Oh. Mm -hmm. That was in one of the lore bits. That was that was what I was talking going on. Okay. Track also, now that I think about it, with the trees being that heavily together, it would be a tropical area, kind of like a jungly tropical area. In the a man, a map and a pen, right? <laughs> he really does need to like rewrite over this. Yeah, um, we need we need to go through the lore on this. I, mean, I need to talk yeah. to this guy. <laughs> <laughs> But um, maybe next week we can bring up this map and show you guys and like kind of go through this as well um, for our podcast on Wednesday. Um, but yeah, no, I thought that was really cool, though. It shows a lot of thoughtfulness and yeah, unfortunately got some stuff wrong, but also. I mean, it might keeps... not be wrong. It might. It, he might have changed the reality for us. True. True. Given the but suggestion. also people kind of cheated with the image that was uh, sent out before and then they were like mining it for data. Yeah, so, yeah, I was just like, err. Data Hi, miner's Oracle, gonna mine. Hey, yep, yep. Oracle. The next thing I wanted to share is this really awesome interactive skill tree. Um, however, there's no point allocation built in yet because he's not sure how that's going to be handed out or how many we're going to have. Um, so that makes sense. But what you can do is you can hover over every single skill and it will tell you what that skill is and what it does. And I thought that was really awesome. You, you can already tell at the top, it's built in, um, ready to go. Let me actually get you the direct um, skill. This is from the Ashes Codex website. Um, 
You can tell at the top there's Bard, Cleric, Fighter, Mage, Rogue, Summoner, and Tank all prepped up and ready to go. And he added the weapon proficiency skill tree as well. Yeah. So I thought that was really neat. That that took a lot of hard work. And um, there's some that have question marks because we just don't know what it does, but it's still really cool. That is really awesome, yeah. actually. Yeah. Why do I feel like uh, the... Why do I feel like from look at this map that there will be an expansion that led southward maybe mm, <laughs> never possible. know possible. Very possible but yeah i would love to like go back and go through the map and really just look at it and and you know theory craft a little <laughs> yeah i'd be curious honestly looking at the way this thing is is built out with the arrows going in specific directions like where does it actually start yeah. But, you know, this is absolutely, I guarantee you, question. just uh, let's put something in there and just make it do stuff and we'll worry about organizing it later. Well, you could. <laughs> I feel like you would either start from the top or you could start from the bottom. And I feel like it'd be the top. So I feel like you'd either have option one on the top on the right or option one on the top or two on the left. Sorry, I'm trying to not sneeze. <laughs> <laughs> so it almost That's seems like it and would then start from there, with. It like unlocks. The Oh, sorry, go ahead. And then from there, it unlocks the, um, the row below it with three mm -hmm. options, and then it branches out from there. Wait, I, I think I understand this. So, I remember having to spec into abilities as the cleric. I could go yeah. the DPS or the healing route. Um, yeah. My wife and I, we both did the, 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 the split on that. So, so like, you, you choose your ability, and your ability unlocks the tree for that ability. Yeah. Would that make sense? Yeah, kind of. Kind of seems that way. Just expand from there. But it's also like, check this out. Like on the top part, you got to start here before you can go there, before you can go here. But then you can't go this direction to the left. So, uh, sorry, I'm here, 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 here. It isn't doing very much for those who aren't watching the stream specifically. But <laughs> yeah, you can start in the top <laughs> middle, and then you go up one, and then you can go left one. But then you can't go left and down to the unknown one on the far left. So you have to like actually a... start on the middle left and then go left and then go up and then go left again to get there. So it's like multiple starting points. Yeah. Okay. So like you, you, you'd, you'd spend, uh, looks like four points in scatter shot. Uh, and then you could do concentrated scatter shot or multi scatter shot, or then you could go to hunt of the tiger and then hunt of the tiger would unlock either imbue arrow barbed or mark of the tiger. And you just keep yeah. going that way. <laughs> so, yeah, it's almost like the the middle four there, like disengage, scatter shot, imbue ammo, weighted, and bear trap are like the four starting points. And then from there, you can branch to other things. But some things require multiple, maybe like up in the top left, the vine field and ensnaring vine field. Mm -hmm. It's almost like you have to do imbue ammo, weighted to get over there, and then scatter shot, get all the way over to the other side to unlock vine field be used maybe i don't know either way it looks like it's gonna it's it's got some complexity and they're thinking about doing multiple things with functions or, so i like it or maybe those spots that split off those are like the the main things and then when you when they meet together they also have an extra effect yeah yeah so many things can't wait to like get into synergy. alpha to test it oh, man. <laughs> yeah right. it's that dude it is it's a nice gaming which by the way uh to kind of wrap it up and bring it back home um for those that missed it because you were either not here or you were gone during an ad um we are state moving our our podcast not our tavern our tavern staying put where it's where it's at um but we're moving the day that we are opening the podcast doors the tavern doors open um uh, to tuesdays and then after that we'll be raiding over to nice so very excited for that I gotta give nice some more love yes 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 <laughs> um but yes so excited oh my gosh Sorry, Ray, thank, uh, you. thank you i will uh, do my own we oh, that's all there. there we go <laughs> <laughs> um but yes <laughs> i'm gonna do both of us maha yay <laughs> She asked me if I have. Oh, so Oracle, by the way, got a streamer and her community interested in coming to Ashes of Creation. 
um, for Alpha 2 and says that she asked me if I have a referral link she can share so I can support. You have no clue how to get one. So the way you get one um, is you go to your forum post, your forum uh, account, and under account, there should be options for referral or even in your shop or in your like ashesofcreation.com shop. Um, but um, yeah. Yeah, you basically um, go to the main website when you when you log in. Uh, in the top right, there's going to be the accounts drop down, and then you go down to referrals. Thank you, Barricade. We appreciate that. Um, we can't believe that we're already going to have our fifth year anniversary in February. <laughs> yeah, fifth, <laughs> five years so of Golden fast. Feather. But yep. uh, five years and what, four, five, six months, somewhere in there? Something like that the, of this channel. Yeah, because we did the Party of Five before that. Yeah, before this. Yeah, but but thank uh, you, Barricade. Congratulations, Much guys. appreciated. Thank you. Oh, thank you. We have some fun stuff planned for that, so keep an ear out. Um, but um, aside from that, you will see Nice Gaming and a few of our other content creators on our content creator summit later this month on the 20th. So keep your eyes out for that. Um, <laughs> meantime, though, Desi, do you have anything that you would like to share as like a final thought or a wrap up idea or just something that you took away from just recent info? Just anything. <laughs> You know, uh, I, can I do a shameless plug? Do it. Sure, absolutely. <laughs> uh, so if any of you guys are, are looking for a, a really fun community that's been around for 12 years now, um, join the Revis Order. We're going to be all elves when it comes to ashes. Um, have lots of fun. Yes. Absolutely. And, uh, there's their website and their Discord, so make sure you go join them. Do I need to have access to Alpha 2 for her to support me? No, no, no. Uh, a referral link just says that, hey, I'm referring you as a person, um, and you just get a percentage of whatever she ends up spending. So if she ends up buying game time, or if she buys the Alpha 2 pack after getting your referral code, you get a percentage of that, and then you can mm -hmm. use that for your own game time, your own subscription, um, mm -hmm. things mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. So you do not need... Um, access the alpha 2 specifically but yeah, we I think... uh after vertech and i give our final thoughts oh go ahead sorry <laughs> or more mounts uh, yes. yeah i was just gonna say that i think i think steven said that any of the referral uh bonuses and and transfers of percentages and all that don't really happen until the game goes live anyway so yeah exactly uh chaffee says can i see some pvp between revis order and doomhold <laughs> 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 oh boy <laughs> you know you you might see some war games for sure yeah oh that would be a fun guild war event plan it out elves versus um dwarves uh, i mean i'm just my, saying wish folly on my guild filthy dwarves oh wow Rude. okay uh, hey. i'm just <laughs> saying the revis order versus uh dunehold it's going to be the first large-scale combat <laughs> Where you can say oh, before you've seen any of them fight that one side is definitely head and shoulders above the rest. Oh, oh no! Okay, with that, <laughs> <laughs> remember the Golden Feather Tavern is a neutral place. Um, please leave your queries out, your qualms outside. Uh, leave your weapons at the door. <laughs> um, my final wrap up or my final thought before we uh, I begin the raid over to Vladis, who's actually talking about um, utilities um, in MMORPGs. My final wrap up is that, yeah, I'd like to see more options from the utility um, options in, in Ashes and you know, try to try to come up with some interesting new things to offer because I'm I'm really bad at doing that. But I bet if I sat down and I um really thought about it, I could probably come up with more than they want me to. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you everybody for stopping by and hanging out with us. Thank you, Des Revis, for visiting us yet again. Always love having you on. Um, everybody, yes. as we always say, the greatest support you can possibly give us is just hanging out with us spending some time chatting and just joining in the conversation and as always you've done that we've enjoyed your inputs we've enjoyed your views and your questions thank you so much we love you you could have been doing anything today you could have been making your own rp guild to take on uh, the revis order 
as uh, the biggest mm-hmm. and bestest um, oh, elven guild out there. Who knows? <laughs> but uh, no, instead you were here learning about that wonderful hey, you guild know. and its leader. Yep. And uh, as a reminder, if you liked the content that you saw, please give us a like, uh, a follow, a sub, and uh, hit that notification if you want to find out when we go live again. Until next indeed, time. Indeed. Catch you later. <laughs> Bye. Bye.